Hello my friends, welcome to our Begammon livestream number 67. Yes, and it's English time again. The regular viewers already know that once in a while, so roughly about once every month, I want to do a stream in uh, English so I can reach a bigger audience. And um, today we have an so to speak, extra English stream, and there are basically two reasons for it. Uh, one is that I have done uh, four times uh, streams about the third move, so where we do this quiz or uh, training track on heroes, where we get all the problems when we are somebody made a mistake on the third move and uh, yes and some of you guys ask for um, something different and since i'm still learning the third move i thought you get something different so we do this not in german we do this in english but all joking aside um, the second reason is that i got a very nice email from one of my viewers um, neil webb from the uk and he said that he enjoyed it very much and um, yes but of course uh, english is not so uh, german is not so easy to understand for non-germans so i said uh, yes let's do another one in english so greetings to the united kingdom and greetings to neil this is especially for you my friend so i'm back from trier so I was not participating in the tournament, but I was visiting the tournament in, from Friday to Sunday. So you guys know that I had a long break from, from Begemmen, so from 1999 to 2019. I did not touch a checker and started in September uh, 2019 again to play Begemmen again. and. Um, yeah, and so yes, a few days ago, this weekend, um, it was the first time I got contact with a real human being, so to speak. So during this project here on YouTube, which started in uh, mid of February this year, I made a lot of new friends or met a lot of new friends and a lot of old friends and this time on the weekend it was the first time i met some of these guys in Trier. it was really awesome and um, yes of course i met uh, marcus which is a huge supporter of this channel and of course also torsten lux who is a regular special guest in in this show and also i met uh, jürgen schettler the president of the German uh, Begemmen Federation and of course I met uh, Dirk Schiemann and a lot of more um, friendly people. It was really a nice, nice weekend and um, yes, I'm really looking forward to play my first tournament then in October, which will be the German Championships in Niedernhausen in Germany. Yeah, so I think we can we can start and do our quiz or our opening training today. So let's switch to um, heroes. So I will quickly explain how you can reach this quiz on our training track when you want to do it on your own. So you have to go to heroes.begammonstudio.com. You will find the link in the description of uh, any of my uh, streams or videos. And there you have to create an account, which is basically for free. But even the premium version, which is around 20 euros per year, is really a steal for what you get there. So I can highly recommend to support this project and to support uh, Terje and uh, yeah, get go premium. So this is what you see when you have uh, logged in. And so I guess the main focus is on playing matches against uh, other human beings, so even against uh, computers if you prefer. But what we want to do today is to use this awesome uh, feature, which is called uh, 
training tracks, so I call them quizzes. And yeah, I will show you quickly how this will work. So you will just go here on the top uh, menu bar and go on practice. And maybe you have to log in again because this is a separate, separate server. Um, but it will be the same uh, login data. So you can use the same uh, username and password that you have uh, created for logging in in Begemmon Studio the first time. Then on the left side, so this, this program or platform is really filled with uh, tons of awesome features. And what we do today is we uh, want to do play checker quiz. And here you get another option. You can either uh, decide to uh, do random quizzes, but what I prefer, and I think it's really, really uh, valuable if you want to improve your game, is that you select a special quiz for a specific type of position. So you get the similar problems again and again and again, and that's, if I think, the best way and the fastest way to learn this wonderful game. So I go to select type, and here you get all kinds of uh, quizzes. And uh, on the left side is a short description, and in the middle is a longer description of what the quiz is about. And on the right side, you get can see the statistics, how the other players have done so far. So what I will do now, and again do now, is um, third roll checker. So these are all positions where you have won the, the opening roll, made your move, the opponent made a move, and then it's your turn again. And still, it's so easy to have difficult problems, which we will soon see. So when we go on the right side on this icon, we can uh, check the statistics for this, this uh, specific quiz. So for example, here you see on the right side, you see the all-time uh, top five, and you always see your, as a sixth entry, your own high score. So you see that uh, Thomas Tenland has here an awesome 53 in a row. So um, if you do this quiz, um, it's all about uh, how many you get right in a row. So as soon as you get one wrong, uh, it will stop and you can start, of course, you can start all over again. So these numbers you see here are all correct answers in a row without a single wrong one. So, and 53 is really awesome, but uh, we're surprised Thomas Tenland is an awesome player and known for his, not only for his uh, awesome game, but also for his extraordinary skills in the opening game. So he's, he well deserved this uh, first place here in this quiz. And you see that the fifth player here, KK, uh, has a score of 30. And my uh, all-time high was 70. So if I really want to reach the top five, I have to reach 31. And on the left side, you always see uh, the top five from today. So you see the user uh, go... 48 has uh, four correct ones in a row. And BG Jürgen, who is also a regular viewer of this channel, has made it up to three today. So you don't know if this is his high score, probably not, but this is only from today. And the high scores, you only see your own and the top five. So we don't know how these other players uh, uh, would uh, rank here below the top five. Anyway, so we will start and to start we just click on on the left side on this title, third role checker. And there we see our board and uh, we are always black and uh, we always have five uh, moves. If there are five legal moves, you have always a list of the five best moves, and then we have to decide on one, press submit, and that's it. And then we see and we get the results. So I will just uh, switch the, later, the layout here that you have a bigger board and the move list. And as you can see, I also 
if you compare it to the previous four versions of this show with the quiz, I made some changes. So the players are now a little bit better to read. And also the score is uh, bigger now, so it should be easier to, to uh, read for you, especially maybe on mobile devices. So I hope this helps. And also the pip count is in a uh, bigger, I made it a little bit bigger as it is on, on Heroes itself. Okay, then also I will briefly show you, um, I did some, I created a little uh, cheat sheet with uh, some hints for me. So I will show you this. I divided this in two parts. One is called here criteria and the other is help criteria. So criteria are the most important things I've found so far to take care of or to look at when I make these decisions. And I will later on, I will come back to this. If it's getting too difficult, I will use this as a checklist. Of course, I have done it for some time. Um, and usually these streams are a little bit longer than the usual ones. So the record was uh, nine and a half hours. But don't worry, today this will not be the case because, of course, mm -hmm. Tomorrow I have to work and stand up quite early, so I guess we will wrap it up maybe after around three hours, I guess. Let's see how it goes. And uh, yeah, so the, the main criteria are uh, zone checkers. So this is how many, in this case, how many checkers the opponent has already in on his side of the board, so in his attacking zone. So we start, both, both sides start with eight checkers and um, in, the, in the third roll, maybe the opponent has already 10 checkers. So the basic idea is that with eight checkers, it's uh, uh, not much risk to, to split our checkers because uh, an eventual blitz will not be too strong with only eight checkers in the zone with nine checkers. It's a little, getting a little bit more dangerous. So we're not talking about uh, additional builders. We are talking about just um, the number of checkers in the zone. So from the 11 point to the two point. And uh, yeah, so with nine checkers, we have to be a little bit more uh, careful. And with 10, definitely almost all the time, with one exception, splitting will be a, a pretty big error because it's just too dangerous. For example, if the opponent starts with uh, uh, his first roll was a double five, where he has then uh, an additional point made and he has 10 checkers in the zone. So this is uh, always a big error then to split. Then uh, asset counts is uh, where we just add up our, our assets after each uh, candidate move. So assets could be uh, points made or uh, an, uh, maybe if you have reduced the number of checkers from a heavy point like the midpoint. So for example, moving a five from uh, 13 uh, to eight to uh, switch from a five, three distribution to a four, four distribution. It's is an asset itself, for example. And of course, the third criteria pip count, it's always it's in almost all positions and especially also in the opening, the pip count or the relative pip count matters a lot. And what's also very important is the priming structure. How well is my position suited for a priming game? And how well is opponent's uh, um, position suited for a priming game? So also here, same as pip count, the difference is important here. Then anchor is very important. So in, uh, in the third move, our opponent may already have an advanced anchor. So with anchor, we are talking about advanced anchors. So uh, 22 point, 21 point or the 20 point. And here we have to uh, always uh, go for an advanced anchor ourselves. So this is an exception to the zone checker criteria. 
So for example, if he has rolled a double four and made the 20 point and uh, played two down from the mid, so he has already 10, 10 checkers in the zone, which under normal conditions you would never split. But the exception is if he has an advanced anchor. And there's another rule I found out is that fighting for the advanced, when you have to fight for the advanced anchor, splitting with an ace is not enough. You have to do more. That's a very important rule in the opening or especially here on this third roll, but most likely also in the fourth roll or fifth roll. Then we have this uh, criteria offense defense. This goes back to uh, Joe Sylvester in the 80s and 90s, where he said uh, if you are more in the offense, it's better to make an offensive play. And if you're already in the defense, it's better to make a defensive move and not try to make an offense, offensive move or attack. Then what's always important, and I usually do this at the very end, I first look at the position uh, as if it would be a money game. And then sometimes the match score helps because then if you think in money game it's close and all in a sudden we realize, oh, we are way ahead or way down or things like that, then it may make our decision uh, easier. And we might make the wrong decision if we don't look at the match score at all. So it's, it's a help on one way. And of course, it's also a must to always check the match score because things change and everything matters. And then we have some help criteria, like things like outfield control, inner board control, a term that was created by uh, uh, Torst Lux. So it's the opponent's, opponent's uh, inner field. So for example, if you move your last back man from the 24 point, maybe to the 20, you give up a lot of uh, inner board control. Then blot count, of course, the number of blots you have. Then, as in uh, many uh, other situations as well, duplication and its brother or sister, the diversification is uh, important. So you try to duplicate opponents' uh, good numbers and you try to diversify your own numbers. And what's also important here, not only you look at sing single numbers, you also look for a duplication of uh, combinations. For example, if uh, you see that the opponent can already do something good with a 6-4, it's no risk at all to put a builder from 13 to 11, because 6-4, which is the only one that would hit from the 24 point, would already be a good number. And if it's a tiny bit better, that does not matter. So, uh, so it's always, or well, a good idea then um, to play 13 to 11 because it, you only have the advantage of a builder for the 10, 9, 7 or 5 point and the usual risk you have is uh, almost uh, nullified because in the in these cases where 6 war already uh, does something good. Then we have this help criteria granted asset which means uh, it usually is when you when you make a point, for example, compared to another move which doesn't make a point but maybe hits loose or hits in the outfield or whatever. Which means uh, if you make a point, it's a granted access. Nobody can uh, remove it. You cannot lose it. You have this advantage. But if you hit, for example, it may be a big advantage. For example, if the opponent dances or if you don't get hit, things like that. But it may also, if he has a good roll, or hits back, or anchors, or whatever, you have nothing. So this is meant by granted access. Asset, sorry. Then initiative. Usually it's better to be active than passive. So, and usually this goes along with hitting, which usually gives you the initiative. And then here, tempo hit question mark. It's always a good idea to check if the uh, opponent has an attacking position or is threatening to, to uh, make new points because you have uh, some builders. So tempo hit means that you hit in a, usually on, the, on, the, on your own ace point, which is positionally not so sound, which you're not so eager to do. 
but it has the big advantage that uh, you steal half of opponent's next roll, which means uh, his builders are worthless. Yeah, because to make a point with uh, two builders, you need your full roll. And if opponent threatens it, it's always a good idea to look for hits or uh, tempo hits. And the last help criteria here is uh, first thought. This means if you are analyzing and you don't come to a conclusion and you're not convinced that you have uh, already found the best idea, uh, the best move, then you can go back and say, what was my first instinct? And maybe then um, you go for that. So these are the... Uh, my little cheat sheet and I try to improve it because my idea is um, I'm not going so uh, for this uh, high score it's just a side goal my idea is I will enter the results or the, the XG ID of each position in an excel sheet and then you will see on the top right you will see how many right how many wrong and the percentage and the percentage is what counts for me and um, in my first session it was 61, then in the second and third it was um, 72, and in the last one it was uh, 73, I think, or 73 two times and then 74, something like that. And my next goal is uh, to reach 80, and I will not stop this quiz training um, before I reach 90, because I think it's so important, because you get this every game. If can only exclude uh, uh, post Crawford games where you maybe there's a free free drop which the, one of the players or the uses, but otherwise in every game you get the third roll and you will see that it's not only about ten or twenty milli points. You or at least I can easily uh, even blunder here yeah, and make an eighty or one hundred milli point error. Uh, so this is very important and it gives you just a good feeling if you have uh, if you make these decisions not only because you learned them by heart but but also because you understand the concept and you can explain here this move is right because of this reason and this will just give you good confidence and will help you in the game will improve your improve your equity and it will just make you feel better that's what I'm strongly uh, believing and that's why I will do this until I reach at least uh, until I get bored because it's so too easy for me and below 90% it's not too easy so and of course I also uh, Marcel told me that that uh, I should have started with the second round which is basically right so I learned this as well and used this uh, app which is available and I even, um, Torsten told me this, that there is also a uh, quiz available. This is really nerdy, but uh, I have to admit that uh, after laughing at the beginning, I have already tried it a few times. And, and I'm talking about the first row. So you say, huh, Rainer, what are you talking about? This is in every uh, decent book. We, we can learn what's the best uh, uh, move in the first row. But, of course, it's getting a little bit more difficult when you have different match scores and you will not believe how many errors will be made. And we are not only talking about 5 or 10 millipoints. You can easily, 20, 30, 40 millipoints, you can mess up easily in the first roll if you did not remember correctly where you have to deviate from the standard move according to the current match score. So, but I... I got convinced that it was it's not a good idea for for a stream, but uh, I will do this in in private just uh, to learn this. And uh, yeah, anyway, uh, I guess most likely after the third move there is another one, fourth move. Maybe this will be uh, the next one, or we go back to a second move. I'm not decided. First of all, I have to reach this uh, ninety percent. So, Arthur, you are sending a question mark, means are you confused that I'm speaking English 
Or is something going wrong? It looks like that the sound is okay. It looks like the video should be okay. So Arthur, please help me out. I did not see your chess chat manage uh, message until now because it was uh, covered by the my cheat sheet. So let me know if there's something wrong and what you want to tell me with this question mark. Anyway, so I will, but it will be good if someone could tell me if the stream is working fine. Maybe I will check this as well here in YouTube. Okay, we have three likes, two waiting visitors. But it looks like the stream is not starting. I'm confused. That's not so nice. Let me check on my mobile. So it looks like that we are having an issue here and the stream is not starting. No data, I'm talking and talking and talking. That's annoying. OBS says that I'm I'm recording and I'm live. Uh oh. That's not good. So I guess I have to upload the recording later on. It's a pity. That's a pity. So I will just write. So, just writing to the chat. So, that's a really a pity, but I think instead of try, retrying and then it will not work, I think the best idea will be to just continue and upload the recording later on. Sorry for that. Okay. Anyway, I have no better idea than trying this. Anyway, so we will start and we have here, uh, we started uh, with uh, three, two and played two down which is a slight error, I think, when we are at an even score. We are 4-4 four, four in a match to 15. And the opponent uh, got uh, double aces and made the 5-point and the 7-point. And now we have a 5-4 to play. So what can we do? We cannot move our 
back check us. We cannot use our builders to make a new po point. So this is a pretty bad, pretty bad rule. I guess maybe maybe I can play 13 to 9 and 11 to 6. I guess slotting is not a good idea against opponents stronger home board. So I do what I usually do um, and go through the list here and look how it looks, so to speak. Um, 13 to 4, which is um, hmm. slotting the 4 point is really a good idea, especially if you have no uh, duplication. Sometimes right, but usually then with heavy duplication. But here I see no duplication of 3, so I would exclude this. Uh, seven points on the six point. I have never seen that this is right in the opening. A sixth checker may be right, but seven is definitely too much. So I will exclude this as well. 39, 11, 6. I think this looks quite good. So we have this sixth checker, but we have flexible builders and we have a good chance to to break the mountain uh, next time with the help of these builders on the 8, 9 or 10 point. Um, yeah. Then what's else? What else do we have? 13 to 9 strips the midpoint as well and slotters, slotters is slotting against the stronger home board. Don't like it. And 13, 8, 10, 6. Uh, yeah, has the same drawback as my preference. 13, 9, 11, 6. But with a weaker builder. We only have the 11 builder on the 11 point as an additional builder. So I prefer this one. Let's see how it goes. And we have a mistake. And the first one. Also, I see that this is not updating. Let me quickly switch and switch back. Okay. So, my move, as I told you guys, you can easily make a rather big mistake. So slotting is here the right move. I think this is really difficult, this position. Um, 13.9 and then 10.5, wow. And my move here, 13.9, seems to be the second one. And as you guys can see, I finally found the option what I have to click that I get on the right side uh, here on this move list that I get the, I have to remove my head that you see it, the 16, yeah. Um, that I see the analyzing level of XG here. And as you know, or should know, you should never compare uh, moves which are analyzed analyzed on different levels so you see that the first and the second move here is analyzed on xg roller plus and my move on four player so you cannot trust to have the correct uh, relative uh, equity here so um um we have to uh, put this in XG. So we have the uh, this possibility to copy the XG ID from the position, which I will do every time for two reasons. Sometimes I will analyze it uh, deeper in the in XG and I al always put it in my Excel sheet that 
it will automatically update the statistics on the upper right corner of my uh, stream. So, and what we always have to do, we have to click on get initial position, otherwise you, we get the ID after the move. And then we just copy it, and since I made it wrong, I put it in the wrong column. So it's really a little bit annoying today because we've got no automatic update. What's going wrong here? Ah, I know what it might be the case here because I did, on, I did it on a second uh, sheet in Excel today because it's the second session with the statistics. Let's check. and see if it's ah okay it's confusing it did not update i had to switch the scene so i hope it will go smoothly from here on so let me now check uh, and enter the id also in uh, xg so that we can analyze it and I will switch the scene to to XG that you can follow what I'm doing. So the idea is that I will uh, analyze my move or my preferred move as well and then see what the differences are. So and here we see the difference is getting bigger bigger. So it's a uh, 38 millipoint error my move, which is not nice. Let's double check it on XG++. So I was pretty convinced that this would be the right move. And I would never have slotted here against the stronger board. Ooh. But of course, the advantage is that uh, that we don't have to stack up our six point huh? with the best move with 39.10.5. Hmm. But still, it's not so easy for me to, to explain. But you see on XG++, my move here, which was this one, is a 45 millipoint error. And the better one would be just to play 39, 10 to 5 without stacking up and without fearing to slot against the stronger board. Okay. It's not so easy. I would not, cannot promise that I would not make a similar uh, mistake again because I'm not convinced that I have completely understood why I have to do this and be so aggressive here. So maybe I will shoot. Uh, analysis later on and to find the right reasoning for this move which now i can't okay we go on next position and then we always see the statistics and yeah go on retry and see our next uh, problem position so we started with a 4-2 and made our four point and the opponent made a three point. And here it's very, very, very important to notice that he did not make the three point with a five three, which would be a whole different story, but he made it with double five, which means that he uh, already has 10 checkers in the attacking zone, which means that uh, splitting is, uh, are huge errors. So basically we have here the choice between 39.65 or 13.8. These are my two choices. And to make it even more complicated, we have here an 
unbalanced match score, we are leading 5 to 2 in a 7 point match. So let's check first in the list. So 39, 6, 6 5. Um, so the, op the opponent has a blitzing structure, so we try to fight against it with priming. So this is a good idea. The question is, with this match score, is it also a good idea? I think maybe this is the right money game move. But I think maybe we have to be a little bit more cautious and play 13 to 8. I've not made a decision yet. I'm pretty sure that splitting here against 10 checkers in the zone is not the right idea. Splitting and slotting here not right as well. So this is one move. And um, the first one here. So here the small split I also don't like. Even the splitting with an ace is usually too dangerous um, when the opponent has 10 checkers in the zone. So I have to decide between this one, the priming move, and 13 to 8. And I guess that, of course, uh, if you are leading in the match, you don't want to to uh, scatter your board with your a lot of plots and give the opponent the opportunity to um, make an early double and threaten to hit them. But isn't 13 to 8 too passive? Can I re really create a prime? At the moment, I only have... Uh, Switch cheese with uh, gaps everywhere. Uh, yeah, I don't like this problem because I, I'm really not sure if the match score changes here. Uh, here, the what the best move will be. So maybe I make the second error in a row. It can happen. And. Still, I go with the standard move and try to prime my opponent while slotting. Let's see. At least we will learn something. Okay. <laughs> um, even though it's on different levels, it seems to be the, the case that 13.8 um, and 39.65 are very, very close. And as you can see, splitting, any splitting play is a huge plunder. Yeah. So the small, smallest available blitz is still already a 94 millipoint uh, error. So let me just uh, copy the XG ID. Let's hope that Excel will update on its own. Yes, it will, does now, or OBS updates it automatically and we will check just how close they are by entering it in uh, in xg and we will check it check it so 13.8 and 39.65 are close, and I will just check it on plus plus. So let's see how close it will be at the end on plus plus. Okay, so on plus plus the passive play would still be an, an 18 millipoint error. Okay, good to know that we have cannot change our strategy strategy just because we are leading here 5-2 to in a seven point match. We still have to create the counter prime and it's not so easy to prime with just two builders when you have still so many gaps in your prime. That's the lesson I 
learn from that and then we switch back to heroes and go to the next so the reason why um, uh, not all moves are here um, evaluated on the same analyzing level is because it's um, so with the move with the check mark so the second move here is the one that was played in the match and uh, if you analyze uh, your matches first of all he only compares your move with the best move and here in my case the the other alternative i took into account uh, was not analyzed here on on xg roller plus plus only in four ply so if I have a different uh, move here than the best or the one that was played in the actual game, then we have to double check it in uh, in XG. Otherwise, we may get suspicious uh, results if you compare moves that are analyzed on, on different uh, deep uh, levels. So anyway, I hope this makes sense for you. And... Um, we go here to next position. So, what happened here? We started with a 3-1 and the opponent countered with double four. Again, it makes a huge difference if he would have made his five point with a 3-1, where we would have split it with a three immediately without thinking. But here he made his five point with double fours, which means we have a similar situation then after this double five that he has already 10 checkers in the zone. So it's the same builder distribution, but just two more men in the zone, which makes a huge difference. And you will see that the normal looking move 24-21 uh, and 13-9 uh, to nine will be a quite sizable error, I'm pretty sure. So we are down in the race and we have to create a counter prime and there's only one sensible move that we have available and this is good enough. We will just play two down. Anyway, we check it. Uh, match call check, of course, we are leading uh, 9 to 5 to 13, which means usually we don't like... Uh, prime versus prime so much by itself but here since uh, the opponent is so strong and the blitzing already we have no choice we would have loved to to split yeah, because we want to create an advanced anchor and we want to run and to to keep things uh, simple when we are ahead in the in the match but here we have no choice so 13-6 of course uh, this is uh, too passive 39.85 for why giving up the eight point so sometimes we get some you can say ridiculous choices this is just because uh, in this quiz format it will always give us the five best moves if there are five legal moves available so this means sometimes you have positions where only two or three moves really make sense for a human being then you have some yeah funny choices here like this. I think there's no human being that would play this move, giving up the eight point to play eight five. Okay, this is, if you have not understand the concept of the zone checkers, uh, or if you have overlooked that he has made um, this five point, not with three one, but with a double four from the midpoint, then you might make this move. So this is a priming move, which we will go for. And here slotting the three point is not a good idea. So this is, I'm very 99.99% convinced that here, this is the right move. And we go to submit. So when you see again that uh, all other moves, especially, uh, yeah, there's only one other move for a human being, which is splitting. It's a huge error of 110 millipoints. It's really huge. So, Yeah, and you see how important this concept of the zone draggers is. So I will just copy the XG ID to 
Enter it to update my statistics. So this was right. And we have 221, 67%. Yeah, it's going up. So, and we go to next position. What happened here? We started we, our game with a 3 2 and we're splitting with the three and played the two down from the midpoint. And the opponent had a double three. He made the three point and the five point. And now we have a four three. So here we have um, basically the question is if you can afford to hit or if you have to make the anchor. So my immediate immediate uh, um, feeling would be, I cannot afford to hit, I have to anchor here and try to build a prime with 13 to nine. This would be my first gut instinct. And we are slightly leading 12-11 in a 17 point match. Let's Take a look at the five alternatives that are here in this list. So the first one is hitting and and uh, hiding the, the plot on the 11 point. So we have some duplication here. So when the opponent enters, it has only fives to hit. So the plot on our Ace point is relatively safe because with a five he will of course hit uh, on the 17 point or on his eight point. Anyway, I don't think that hitting with only a one point board is such a good idea. If the opponent has three points and being ahead in the in the match makes it even worse to uh, to choose uh, a move where the gammons go up gammon rate goes up. So this is the move I first mentioned, making the anchor and trying to build a prime and hope that the opponent doesn't roll an eight or a 10. And then we most likely can start building our counter prime. Okay, here we have another hitting roll, but this is, I guess it's uh, worse. Now we have three plots. The opponent can hit with twos and fives and five, six, our plot on our 11 point. I don't think that this is the right idea. So hitting in 13, 10, yeah, only plots, no points made and the opponent has such a strong, strong home board. No good idea. And this cannot be an improvement here. I don't think so. So oh, he has we give the opponents twos and maybe fives to hit because uh, he has a stronger board. Um, yeah, so I'm pretty convinced that this is the right move here. Let's check. So this is correct and seems to be that uh, hitting is a rather big mistake and the best hitting would be 24 to 17 here which is still a big mistake with uh, 57 uh, milli points okay and we got this one right which is always nice and Update our statistic. That is that one right. And we are up to 75%. And we continue. So, what happened here? We had a 3 2 again. And we split it with the three and played the two down. And the opponent hit us with a six four. Hit on our eleven point, and now we have a five four. 
where basically we have the luxury that we can decide which anchor we want to make. We can make the opponent's 20 point, which is the best anchor we can make. The problem is that we give up uh, some inner board control because we have because we have to use our back checker on the 24 point to do this. So we have no control over the 24, 23 and 22 point, which is not so nice, especially when you're down in the race. You need inner board and outer board control. And let's take a look at it. Uh, in the match score, we are down two to six in a seven point match. Um, Yeah, which will not help us deciding which anchor to make, I think. It shows that we should basically be more aggressive. Ah, okay, I have to take take a precise look at the match score. It's not two to six to seven, it's also Crawford. So, which means um, it's basically like a double match point here. Of course, it makes not a big difference if we win one or two points, since we have an even, even score. So we need two more games or or a gammon. Makes no difference if we win one or two points. So we should have the same or apply the same strategy as in a double match point. Anyway, let's check it. So making no anchor at all is in a double match point, not so bad. So I'm pretty sure that uh, that making the 20 point in double match point has to be an error. Uh, if you're down in the race, giving up, giving up the inner board control cannot be right. Uh, So this is 21 and 13.8. Yeah, making the anchor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in double match point, I think this may be a good idea at, at, at money game, I guess. But in double match point, 21 and 6 1 is uh, not a good idea. Making this anchor, I don't like it in double match point. Hmm. So and this is does not make any sense to to slot the three point. So and I don't like this at least at double match point. I don't like hitting on the ace point. It does not make a sense to me to to commit yourself making the one point so early. No, I don't like it. So for me, it's this one or this one. So the builder on the nine point, if he hits with an eight, we have a lot of roles where we can hit back or if we can make an advanced anchor without giving up our inner board control or inner field control. So. I like this in double match point. I will try it. My second best would be this one, but I think it's a, bit, a little bit too stacky. And uh, yeah, we want to make a prime and we don't fear gammons in double match point. So let's go for this. Not good, not good. Ooh, there I was off by a mile. That was my move here. Pooh, 55 millipoints. Even though we have, of course, to check it on 
on uh, XG because we have here different uh, levels, so we cannot trust the differences. But it will not be the best move, that's for sure. So I messed it up. The question is, by how much have I messed it up? That's why we check the and copy the XG ID. And we have to copy it here. Now we are back to 60%. Yeah, which I don't like. Um, and we have to check this on XG. And I will switch to XG so that you can follow along. Okay, because it's so interesting, I will analyze it on plus plus as well. Yeah, so here I was completely off. Oh, I guess in money game I would have made this 21, 13 to 8 move, which is, um, I will check for money game as well because I'm really interested what's the best move in, in money game. And I don't want to remember wrong things because we are here to learn, so this is quite important, I think. So what we have learned is here even a double match point um, playing with no anchor at all and uh, playing with four plots is even a double match point too much. So because 57 millipoints is a huge error. And that a double match point making the 20 point Is a little bit better, 12 millipoints better than just making the 21 point. Okay, let's check it in money game. Ooh, still the gold point is right here. I know that, of course, we all know that the 20 point is a lot stronger, the 20 anchor than the 21. But here the question is, how much is it worth that you have this goldkeeper, or that you give up your goldkeeper to make the 20 point? Um, so here, of course, of course, uh, my play would have been a huge blunder. Uh, I would never have moved it in. But I thought that in double match point, when the gammons don't count, you could live without an anchor and maximum inner board and outfield control. But this was definitely not the right idea. Okay, and then we can remember that making the 20 point gold is gold after all. <sighs> Sounds like a platitude, but. Seems to be true. Then we go back to the quiz and let's hope that we will do better next time with the next position. So, at least I'm on the same level with Jürgen now, but we'll try to do better. Okay, so what happened here? We started the game with a 4-2, made our 4-point. And the opponent got a 3-2 and split it with the 2 correctly. And played the 3 down from the midpoint. And now we have aces to play. Um, 
I'm pretty sure that uh, making the five point and switching from four to three is, is the best. Making the five point is a uh, key anyway. Then splitting or shifting from the eight point to the bar point hardly improves our position. But what really counts here is even so that of course the six, five and four point is stronger by, than the six, five and three point. But here uh, the opponent already has a building structure. So he has three builders. Builders on the six point, on the eight point, and on the ten point. So he's threatening to make a good blocking point if we leave him alone. And we can make... So shifting from four to three is... Maybe it will end up in a blitz, but of course with eight checkers in the zone, blitzing is not our highest priority. But I like the tempo hit component of this move. That's why I'm pretty sure that I will do it. Uh, match score is uh, two all to seven. So nothing special. So this is my move. Um, yeah, yeah, just shifting from eight to seven is not the right idea, I'm pretty sure too passive you can make a blocking point you can uh, anchor with a two and uh, yeah how we will continue he's he already sees daylight with his checker on our three point yeah it's, it looks nice but it's way too passive this four point and then splitting instead of making the five point and not a good idea splitting and making the five point is basically i think this is might be better than making the bar point but since we don't hit, the opponent has all, we give him all the way he needs to improve his position to either anchor or make a, a blocking point with his building structure or attacking structure. Okay, and this is ridiculous, of course. Then I will lock in this tempo, tempo hit semi blitz move. And I'm pretty sure that this is the right one. Yeah, so huge blunder, huge blunder to make to make a different move without hitting. So then let's copy the XG ID and continue with the next one. Got this right. And we have two to one ratio, which is not bad, but not good enough to be proud of. Let's check and continue. Next position. So we started with a 4-2 made of a 4-point. The opponent had a 5-1 and correctly split it with the ace and played the 5 down from the midpoint. And now we have a 6-1 to play. And oh. of course uh, we have two, two options. Hitting two checkers with a 2 and 2-1. Two Making the bar point as an option. Playing uh, the six from 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 the twenty four point is not so attractive, especially because uh, the opponent has uh, five men on the eight point, which is not so not so good, I would say. Um, I think basically and 13 to, to 6 is too, way too passive. So double hit or making the bar point are my, my two plays. So what's the match score? 4-4 four, four in, in an 11 point uh, match. So this will not necessarily help us. 
Let's go through the five alternatives. So we moving up both triggers. I don't like to be honest. I don't like it. This one I like. Letting two trackers but giving up the eight point. Splitting and hitting. No, if I hit on the two point, I will continue. There are far fewer shots. 13 to 6 is not good as well. So I have to decide between this one and this one. So he's not threatening anything. So we don't need need a tempo hit here. And we still only have eight checkers in the zone, which argues against this hitting or blitzing attempt as well. The only thing that argues for hitting is and putting two men on the on the roof is that it makes it real hard for the opponent to improve his position. He only has uh, stacks, stack on the six, stack on um, little stack on the eight point and on the on his midpoint. So and here we bring another checker in the zone and put him under pressure. If he doesn't roll a six or if he cannot anchor up with a three four or two one he may be in trouble very soon. Maybe double hit is correct but I like making the bar point, to be honest. Let's go for it. No, 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 not good, not good, not good enough at least. So in the current game or in the actual game, the player made the super safe move, 13 to six. And since this is on XG Roller++, plus plus, the first two moves and making the bar point I have is on 4-ply analyzed. So we have to double check it on XG. Then let's do that. Unfortunately, we got this wrong again. Oh, it's not a good day. And... Let's check it on XG. I'll show you. So it's interesting that the two plays, so my play is S bad as the safe play, which I would have never made. So this is quite interesting. Cool. Okay. Let's give him a few seconds to complete his plus plus analyzing. Yeah, I saw the arguments for hitting. You heard, uh, heard them. But still, I fell in love with my bar point. And I did not like, yeah, I did not like giving up the eight point. But to be honest, I gave up my eight point as well, just for getting the bar point. So maybe this should have convinced me that uh, double hitting, if I have to give up my eight point anyway, and to take the initiative. Yeah, maybe I should have found it. 23 milli point error, not a huge thing, but yeah, I hope I learned my lesson. And we continue with the next position.
which is this one. We won the opening with 3-1, made our five point. The opponent replied with a 2-1. I split it with the ace and played the two down from the midpoint. And now we have double threes, which is a very nice roll, which is good. But here in the quiz, doubles always are having plunder potential, or at least error potential. Because there are so many possibilities. Okay, what do we have here? So the match score will not help us very much, because it's 0-0 uh, zero, zero in a 7-point match. So we should basically treat this like in a as if it would be a money game. Um, so, he has nine trackers in the zone, and the ninth tracker is on the farthest away point, which just counts as being in this part of the zone, which is the 11 point. So, we do not have a huge desire or feel not a huge urge to to make uh, the 21 point what are the alternatives what i like is just making the bar point which looks very nice making the strongest four four prime available yeah. breaking the mountain on the on the midpoint so re reducing the overloaded overloaded uh, midpoint. The alternative would be making the 3 and the 10. Uh, I don't like it so much. And the idea is basically to, to get a doubling position. And I think making the bar point, we have the biggest chance so to get into a good position for doubling. Let's look at the five alternatives on the board. So 10 and 3, yeah, yeah. We have too many gaps in our primes, I think, and we have no attacking chances. We are not threatening a lot. I'm not so sure about this. Then making the opponent's bar point, okay. This would be right if we would be under pressure in the defense. Remember the the, the criteria, one of which was um, off, offense defense, so which means um, if we are in, what's our starting position here? Are we more? in the offense or on the defense if we look at the starting position or we'll just go to, to undo that you see the starting position so definitely we are more on the offense side huh? since we have our made our strongest offense point offensive point our five point and the opponent has just split it and created a small builder on the 11 point so we're definitely on the offense side so which means uh, we should not we should try to avoid making defensive play. And here, uh, just making the uh, 18 point is definitely a defensive play, which does not make much sense, I think, if we are in the offense. Same idea, it's a nice play. It's also, I like it because it's it has the same advantage as the bar point and that we are trying to closely come to a uh, position where we can we have an effective double if it's a close take or a close pass doesn't matter and this has i think uh, we are closer to a double than after this uh, stripping play with 10 point and 3 point. So I like this as well as a close second. Okay, 3 point and 21. Yeah. 
Yeah, why, why making a blitzing move here and making this three point? Yeah, we've just eight checkers in the sword. You still have this heavy midpoint. I don't like it. So this is uh, my play. And this looks very appealing to me as well. Not so easy, but I go with the attacking play here and hope that it will be the best. Let's check. Ooh, I made a correct move. That's good. Oh. And my second move here. So in, in the game, it was uh, making the 21 point and the three point was played, which I did not like. And we will have to check how bad my second move was because we have here different uh, level of the analyzing. We have to check this in XG. So do the same stuff as always, we copy it and we update our statistic and copy it to xg and let's see how close these two plays are i'll we'll switch to xg again Plus plus, there are 32 millipoints apart. And just to be complete, I will check it on plus plus, which is the gold standard, so to speak, because it's the ideal compromise between accuracy and uh, speed. Of course, rollouts would be more accurate but they take, of course, hours, and plus plus usually still takes uh, only seconds. Okay, so it's still not a small thing. It's too defensive here. But our criteria of uh, offense, offense, defense, defense helped us here and saved us this point, which is good. So our cheat sheet uh, or our concepts helped us to solve this problem. Okay, let's continue. We are back to 30, uh, 63% far away from my goal of 80%. Let's see if we can get another one right. I think so, because this is an easy one again, because um, here we uh, had a 5-4 in the opening and we made the standard play of playing the 5 down from the midpoint and splitting with the 4, splitting our backman with the 4. and our opponent pointed on our head, but not, very important, not with a 3-1, after which he would still have only um, eight checkers in the attack in his attacking zone, but he pointed on us with double four, which means uh, he has now 10 checkers, and we know with 10 checkers it's very important to avoid splitting, except if the opponent already has an advanced anchor. He doesn't, but we are on the roof and we cannot anchor. We have to play the two. The question is, uh, do we come out or do we play 13 to 8? So we have not the option. We are forced to split with this, <laughs> with this role, so to speak. So we have bar 18. And 
we have 13 to 8 and we have the only other legal play would be 8 to 3 where I don't see a point so what's the best one here if you're forced to split I think if you're forced to split you may be better off doing the minor split huh? this may be an idea on the other side if we uh, enter on the 23 point he can attack us there but with pleasure with sixes and fours and if we jump out like in the position here he at least cannot cannot attack us in the inner board but still he has sixes and ones to hit in the on the 18 point and uh, fives to hit on the 24 point and with uh, moves like or rolls like six five he would uh, love to make a double hit and then have 11 checkers in the zone and we have two checkers on the barn so and uh, we are behind so we don't want to we don't want to race anyway or well, it's not so the basic idea is more to prime than to than to race i think that i will go for this one and hope that i will survive his attack let's hope for the best okay I made the same error than Roberto, who played here against Michi. Oh, at least that's some kind of uh, yeah support. I don't feel so dumb if a very good player made the same mistake. Yeah, I guess. It's another position that I have to analyze more deeply to understand here if you are forced if you are forced to split like here and it's better to run out. This is always the case if you are forced to split in a position where you the opponent has so many checkers in the zone that you would have preferred to anchor even if you have to anchor on the 24 point. Hmm. Okay, definitely not an easy one. And I will definitely not learn it now. But I will next I will let you know later on in, in another stream maybe what I found out. So let's just copy this over to the wrong column where are my errors. Only five to four. Wow, what a bad day. What a bad day. But it's not over yet. We can always start another quiz. There's always another one we can do. And hope that we'll do it better. So, like this one. What do we have here? We made our four point with a four two in the opening. And the opponent liked this and did the same with his four two. And now we have a 6-4. So we have basically the same options as in the opening. We can make our 2-point, which I don't like when we have to give up the 8-point. Or we can run, or we can go out to the 18-point and play 13-9, to nine, which I prefer. So the basic idea is or concept I think here is that um, if the opponent started in the opening with a 3-1 or 4-2 or 5-3 um, with a 6-3 or 6-2 you come out to the 18 point. Mm -hmm. With a 6-4 you're still better to, to run. But here we are now have a, even if the opponent has a stronger board. But here now we have uh, same strength in in the home board. We both have our made our four point. 
which makes our return hits uh, stronger because now we also have a two point board. And he has the stripped uh, uh, eight point, which means if he hits with the ace, he has to give up his uh, eight point, which he will not like. And yeah, and we get more return hits if we go jump out to the 14 point and he hits with a two, we only have a five six to hit back. And on the on the 18 point, we get a lot a lot more return hits from the bar. So I'm pretty sure that uh, 24 to 18 and 13 to 9 is the best um, move here. Let's go through the alternatives. Uh, match score check at the end is 6 to 5. We're leading 6 to 5 in a 17 point match. So it should not make a big difference, I think. So 2 point, yeah. I don't like making the 2 point when you have to give up the 8 point. And yeah, he will now play two down and then it's getting even harder to to split. So now with eight points, uh, not eight points, with eight checkers in the in the zone, it's it's uh, the right time to split. And it's getting, things are most likely getting worse. When the, when the opponent unstacks his midpoint with one or two checkers and brings them into the zone. So this is my move, I'm pretty sure this is right. This should be a second. Uh, basically you could argue that we are 10 pips ahead, so then we race, but I still think it's better to play 18 and 9. So, splitting and slotting, I don't think that this is a good idea here on this one. I don't like this one. So let's go for this. Let's see what happens. And if things go well, go really bad, then I'm down to 50% and may fall down to even under 50% if I make another error in the next one, which I hope will not happen. So good, we made this right. And uh, making the two point would be a big error here, which was done here in the actual game or match. It's a 123 millipoint error. So you see what huge mistakes you can make even in the third roll. It does look so, so innocent huh? making the two point. Yeah, you give up the eight point, but that it's a 123 millipoint error. That's huge. Okay, then let's quickly copy the XG ID into my Excel sheet to update the statistic. So, and OBS did not update it here. Sometimes it's very confusing. Why does it do that? So I have to switch screen again. To get the update, which is really annoying. And it wasn't even enough to switch the scene. Now it changed. Okay, who understands here the uh, OBS software? I think it's the OBS thing here, which bothers me a little bit, but at least we found a solution by switching scenes and to force the update somehow. Anyway, let us continue and go to next position since we got this one right. So here we started with a 6-4 in the opening and doing the Grandmaster play 24 to 18 and 39. And the opponent hit us with a 5 2. He splitted his back man with the 2 and covered his split, so to speak, by a tempo hit from 6 to 9. Uh, from 6 to 1, sorry. 
And now we have a 4-3. And now we have two very attractive options, making the anchor or making the nine point. I think which should both be better than hitting loose on the three point, which I don't like at all. And we have here, when we look at the match score, we are leading 9 to 5 in the 23 point match. Um, maybe this points into anchoring up because we want a little bit more safety. So if I really think that the two plays making the 18 point or making the 9 point are close, then maybe the match lead points into the direction of anchoring. I don't know. Uh, let's quickly check here how it looks on the board. This is the uh, nine point making play. So this looks very attractive to me. The only thing that worries me a little bit is the match score. So at an even score, I think this is uh, easy. Yeah, because the nine point uh, is six point away from a potential anchor because the opponent has split it to the 22 point and now we are six points away. This is quite good. And we try to, to attack. If if he doesn't anchor up, we can attack. So the, the checkers on the nine point are very useful. And if he anchors up, we have a good blocking point. So the only thing that worries me is here if the match score changes things here so that the anchoring is so important. But the opponent only has a one point board. He has this blot on the ace point. He's not really threatening much. So this makes no sense, I think. It's just to, to get these five legal moves. Hitting is a really bad idea. This is uh, another one. And um, yeah, this also makes no sense. But I think the, the nine point is just too valuable here. Yeah. So and we also avoid getting hit on our nine point with this because we are already ahead in the race, nine nine pips. So if he hits us after the other move on our nine point, we lose 16 points in the race, which is quite a lot. And if he hits us on, on his bar point, it only costs us uh, seven points. That's quite a big, so if, it's about an, an extra roll that he, that he gains, um, which is quite huge. So I like this move, the nine point, and make it here and hope that um, the match lead is not so big. So just four points and we are still 14 points away, so it should not make a difference. So I guess making the nine point should be clear. Clearly the best move. Let's see. <laughs> it's not going well today. It's really not going well today. So I made the same the same error than the player in the actual match. So do you want mini point error? The only thing I can do here and I have to do because I, I, I must learn if it's a match score thing or not. But I fear that it's not a match score thing or that basically the 18 anchor by itself is better than the nine point. We will find out. We have to copy the XG ID anyway. <sighs> and update our statistic. And we're down to 55%. And I will copy it to XG. And we will check how it is in the money game. So, can still guess. Yeah, I feared it. I feared it. No, yeah. At least I was right on that the match score doesn't change things. But I was off by estimating the, that the nine point is more valuable than the than the uh, bar point anchor. And that's why I was off by a mile. 
But being off by a mile also means that you have a great opportunity to learn a lot. So you always have to should take it this way and, uh, and hopefully make fewer mistakes in your next uh, match where it counts. So, let's see, yeah, still in money game, it's a 20 millipoint error here to make the 9 point. Wow. Wow. Okay. I think we have to live with that. And try it with another one. And with this one here, what happened? We made our four point in the opening with a four two, and the opponent had a double five. Again, very important to recognize the difference if he makes a three point with a five three, where we would now happily split with twenty with the ace and play the four down but against uh, double five where his eight point is not stripped and what's even more important that he has 10 checkers in the zone. It's a huge error to, or even a blunder. And we had a similar situation. Was it against a five three? No, I think it was against a four two. Huh? Uh, against, um, sorry, what I'm talking against uh, double four where we had this situation here and uh, the right one was uh, earlier 39 to 65. So I'm pretty sure that still 13 to 9 and 6 to 5 is the right play. We saw like earlier on that 13 to 8 is just too passive. It's the same idea that we don't want to split and we want to counter prime but but this is just to, yeah, you only have two builders. Two builders for the bar point, two builders for the five point. And we have to improve our prime. And splitting is wrong, pretty wrong. This is the right move. Splitting in and slotting is suicide here. And up, up is not a good idea as well, as we have explained early on. I'm pretty convinced. Early on, I was not so sure about the uh, second move, 13 to 8, but we saw it was a pretty big mistake, or a pretty big, big mistake, uh, difference. And okay, I will lock in the slotting play, and I'm pretty sure that's the right one. We saw here a typical mistake here. Uh, splitting with, with the ace. Uh, it looks so innocent, uh, but it's a huge blunder here. 92 millipoints. Uh, and the passive play here, even though it's a different level, but it's still a. Yeah, it's way better than splitting. And you see, it's get, getting even worse with the other hyper aggressive uh, splits. But even the small split is a huge blunder with 92 millipoints. Keep that in mind. Okay, let's quickly copy this and update the analysis as the statistics. So we have 58%. Right now, go, go, go. <laughs> okay, let's try it with the next one. I hope we get an easy one again. We opened with a 5-1 and made the normal play nowadays with 13-2-8 and splitting with the ace. And the opponent had a 6-2 where he split it with the 6 and played the 2 down and now we have 6-5. So... <laughs> Ooh. 
what I'm very sure is that uh, 24 to 13 is a mistake. But we have two good options here. We can either make the 18 point anchor or we can uh, make the blitzing play 13 to 7 and 6 to 1 which is in the opening already strong because uh, you have uh, you bring uh, the ninth checker in the zone by hitting so you can make the 6-1 hit and here we even have uh, already a ninth checker in the zone so we bring this the tenth checker in the zone but like Michi says but um, we are leading 10 to 3 in a 15 point match which is quite huge so <laughs> so at least we have to uh, consider making the 18 point and um, previously we had this uh, situation where we had the option between making the 18 point and or making the nine point and here we have this where it was correct even in money game to make the the defensive anchor oh. I'm not sure about money game or let's say it differently I'm no I'm relatively sure that I would play 13 to 7 and 6 to 1 in money game but I'm really not sure when leading 10 to 3 in a 15 point match if you should not just anchor up I think I will do it that's what this move so just running makes no sense to me just leaving your your back checker alone and neither hitting and taking the initiative nor making the anchor this is a huge error or well, even a blunder i'm sure then if i hit on the bar point i will not jump out i will hit six to one yeah. this is the attacking play Two down makes no sense. Stripping, giving more shots and stripping the midpoint, this is stupid. So we have the option between this, which would be at a normal match score or an even score, or behind would be my clear choice. But leading. <sighs> it's too difficult. I think leading by so much and since I I saw that I'm way off in my estimation regarding the the value of the opponent's 18 point as we have seen in this problem uh, we had the choice between the 18 anchor and making the 9 point and here the match lead is even bigger so Position is so nice here after after the double hit, you know. Okay, because of the match later, I'd make the anchor. Let's see what happens. But I'm really not sure. Oh, I should have been sure. So I cannot be too happy about getting the right answer here because because my my second play, which I also liked, is an 108 milli point error here at the score. And of course, we have to check now what's what's the right play in money game. Does this uh, 108 milli point difference come from the match score, or is the 18 point, as we have seen earlier, so strong by itself? that we should prefer it to the double double hit. That's interesting. We will find out very soon. I will just update the statistic and check it in 
XG and see what the right play will be in money game. And we take a look at it. We can still guess. Yeah. And again, it's not, of course, uh, um, in money game is getting closer, but it's still a relatively big error not to make the 18 point. Yeah, let's check it on plus plus. It's not an 100 millipoint error or more. But in money game still, it's an error to go for the blitz. Of course, you can argue with this um, criteria uh, granted access or, or help criteria granted access which the anchor is in granted access. Nobody can take it away from us. And hitting loose may go very well, but if he enters with an ace, for example, we have no value at all from our move. Okay, so in money game, it's a, still a 34 millipoint error to make the double hit instead of making this uh, anchor. Okay, I think I learned a lot and hope you learned a lot as well. And we can continue. With the next position, which hopefully will be easy. <laughs> Let's see. So we had this 5-3 uh, in the opening. We made our three point like everybody does in our days. And the opponent had a 5-1 and correctly split it with the ace and played the 5 down from the midpoint. And now we have a 6-2. So the problem is that playing 13 to 11 and 24 to 18 to the 18 is not so attractive because the fourth checker on the 8 point and playing 13-11 is not so attractive because not only 6-4 hits here, but also 5-4 and 6-3. Uh, and so it's the chances to get hit are tripled compared to if the opponent would, uh, still had his two back checkers uh, on the 24 point. So I think we have a good reason to just run with uh, 24-16, which I like. Let's check. And uh, match score, we are leading 5-2, to two, but in a very long match, in a match to 25. Um, let's check. Um, yeah. This is right sometimes, but here they have six and ones to hit on the bar point, threes and fives to hit on the three. And we gave up inner board control and we are not connected with our other back checker with a six instead with a four. We prefer with a six because then we can hit back from, from the bar with a six which doesn't enter. It's always nice to have good use for your non-entering numbers. I don't like it. I like this one, to be honest. Um, here, yeah. The builder has a uh, increased price, six shots instead of two. And uh, yeah, we will most likely not, cannot use it in the near future because uh, most likely the, it will either get hit or we get hit on on the opponent's uh, bar point. And so we have to use half of the roll for entering. I don't, yeah, I don't like it. It's not worth it. Then slotting is right sometimes, but not here. And also slotting against a uh, double shot, sometimes all, also right. But you, you need heavy duplication for it to be right. Um, so 13-5, I don't think this is right. And here, splitting and slotting in a double shot, I don't like. 
So I will go just with the running play and hope for the best. Okay, the normal play, so to speak, is a 40 millipoint error. Well done, player one. And let's quickly copy the ID, update the statistics, and continue. Next position. So, what happened here? We had a 6-3 in the opening, played 24 to 18 and 13 to 10, and the opponent had um, double sixes. Made both bar points while hitting us on his bar point, and now we had a 5-2. And you remember my rule, when the opponent has an advanced anchor, we have to fight for an advanced anchor and the small split which would equal, uh, equal to um, entering on the 23 point is not enough. We are not aggressive enough to fight for an advanced anger. So entering with the 5 is a must according to my rule. And until now I found no exception. I'm sure maybe there might exist some exceptions, but until now or until I don't find any or come up with any, I will just follow my, my rules here or my concept. So it's, it's a must for me to enter on the 20 point. And then the two is the question. And uh, usually it's quite good to start uh, slotting your home board because what's your second priority is uh, to get a stronger, strong home board as quickly as possible. Because here in this uh, double six variation, the the opponent is way ahead in the race, which means it's most likely that, has, that he has to run from his bar anchor anytime soon. And if, if he doesn't do it with a, a double, he will, have, he will have to leave one checker alone. And if he attack or hit this checker, it would be very nice to have a strong home board so that we get the maximum use of, hit, of the hit. And I think that playing 20 and then 10 to 8 is too passive. So I just go for the multi-aggressive bar 20 and 6 to 4. And the second second play would be at bar 20 and then 10 to 8. Um, we are ahead 8 to 7 in an 11 point match, of course. But still we need this advanced anchor course maybe the opponent will double but we still have a take i think so in my opinion this is a little bit the right idea with the five but yeah it's not so bad to put plots before the uh, opponent's 18 point or anchor and of course it's a it's a race if we uh, have a nice home board when he when he will finally run that's why we start uh, slotting. And if he would hit now with a three, it's it's in doubt if he would prefer to hit from the bar from his anchor and not play A to five. So we have some duplication of threes as well involved here. Okay, this is according to my rule. It's too defensive, the one split. You have at least split to the 22 point when your opponent has an uh, advanced anchor. It, it comes to fighting for the advanced anchor. So Akiko made a mistake here. Yeah, let's see what it is. I hope it will not be the same. So we are behind in the race. So up, up is not not a good idea. I think you can argue that you can, uh, if he attacks us on the twenty point, we can make a an anchor on the twenty two point. But it's not the nicest one anyway. So oh, this is way too passive. So this is my move. This one. I saw it so often. Accuracy, accuracy, aggressively splitting and aggressively splotting. Slotting is the right idea against the early uh, s uh, countering the early double sixes from your opponent. 
Let's see if we found an exception here. It seems that we found an exception and up, up was right here. So I have to modify my, my rules or my concept because uh, it's a close second. Of course, we have to check it on plus plus because this is on plus here, but it will not change that um, up up is here the right idea. Interesting. Finally, I found an exception to my so successful rule or concept against the early advanced anchor of the opponent. So let's do the usual stuff. We copy it and first we have to enter it in the losing column. Now we are back to 60%. And I will enter it in XG. And show you the results. And of course, it's also interesting if the match score, most likely the match score makes a difference here. Man. Oh. Let's check the first three on plus plus. So the aggressive split is still right, we learn, but combined with the aggressive slotting, I guess it's not right when you are leading in the match. You have to be a little bit more careful. So like here, for example, the opponent is four away, so his doubles with gammon threats are really annoying. And I'm pretty sure that's why uh, uh, 10 and may even be better than my left uh, 6 4. Yes, as you see, my move is here 41, then the passive one is uh, 33 milli points worse than the best. So we still have a difference of uh, 8 milli points. And that's the best. So now it's getting interesting when we say what's the situation in, in a money game. And I hope that at least my play jumps up to the top now again. Uh, it jumps, but not enough. Let's go to plus plus. So very close, but uh, still on plus only my move. Let's see what happens if we get the plus plus results. Okay, at least you see that in, in an even score in money game, that my play makes some sense, but somehow, um, as we have all often seen in these situations, is that it makes a huge difference if you are slotting the five or the four point. Uh, no matter if it's with contact, so as a real slot, which the opponent might hit, or if it's just here without contact in the ho in our home board. So. And we had other variations with an ace, but it was clearly correct to hit uh, to, to slot from 6 to 5. But slotting from 6 to 4 is a lot weaker, because if you made it, we have a weaker home board than if you slot the 5 and make it later. But at least in money game, it, was, it would be acceptable. But we should learn that here, coming up, is the right idea. And especially if we are leading in the match. So
so my play was way off that score then I guess we try another one and let's see what happens So, what's going on here? Um, we had 3-2 uh, and make our standard move. Oh, and now you see that we are on the side of uh, Mochi. Mochi made an error here and we can try to make it better. No pressure. <laughs> okay, we started with 3-2, make the normal move of splitting with the 3, 24 to 21 and bringing the 2 down from the mid. And the opponent had a double five. And make the normal blitzing move, making the three in one point. And now we have three two. We have to enter with the two, and the question is how to play this three, which is not easy. I think it's a good idea to stay back on the 23 point, because the opponent is not so eager to attack us on his two point he has only a check us in the zone so an attack on the on the two point is not so effective but if we move up to the 20 point attacking there with an a3 on or eight would be quite attractive so i think i will not come up to the 20 and i will not come up to the 18 point which is not an option anyway here in the list, I thought. So the question is then playing safe 11 to 8 or playing 13 to 10. Ooh. Okay, so I don't like this move. Uh, because now my, my two plots are on the two points he likes to attack the most with the most pleasure. So I will not play this. This is okay. I got no blots here. This looks very reasonable to me. It's a normal move. Uh, removing removing the blot or hiding the blot. And you threaten now to anchor with a two. So I like very much. This one is also quite nice because the main idea against the double five blitz is to make a counter prime. Yeah, and, and the thing is, if he hits us with a, with a nine or a 10, we have two points to land on on the other side. With a two or a four, we make an anchor. So I'm not so much worried about uh, getting hit. And we need a prime against the blitzing. We need an anchor and then a prime. That that's our game plan. How we how we uh, win against a double five blitz from the opponent. I like this. Slotting is a little bit too much, I think. Slotting with an ace might be an idea, but from eight to five, it's too much. And slotting the three point, no. I go with this one. That's a very cool move. Uh, the first, the first uh, impression is that uh, after the blitz, it's dangerous to give additional blots, but they are not really in danger. If they get hit. I can use them to anchor. I'm favorite to make an anchor. And even the 23 anchor is very good against or very effective against the opponent's double five blitz. And the other option for me would be this one. And I just think it's just a little bit too, too stacky and too passive. I'm not threatening anything. Okay, I go with this one, with this big play, Grandmaster play. Let's see how good it is. 
Well, I did beat Mochi. Mochi played the 11 8, which is not a huge big deal, but still a 30 millipoint error. Okay. So if you want to learn more about this kind of positions, then uh, watch the UPC final, one of the UPC final videos at the beginning of this year. Um, you need to watch the episode where Dirk Shimon was the secret grandmaster. There they play, they explained this strategy against the double five blitz. Okay, then let's quickly copy the ID. And we are back to 33, 63%. Still not far away from my goal, but better than nothing. Maybe we can add another one. So 4-2, we opened and made our four point. Well, the opponent had a 5-3 and made his three point. And this time Mochi is our opponent. And now we have double twos. So the good thing is that in this situation, uh, many options have gone already because usually one part of the double two is six to four two times. We already have the four point thanks to our four two opening. And another important part is uh, making the 22 anchor or even even the golden point sometimes in gammon safe situations, which is not the case here at 5-5 five, five uh, in an 11 point match. So these all options are already eliminated. So we have basically making the nine point or making the 11 point and slotting, what a bill, putting a builder on the nine point. More I don't see, to be honest. Let's check. Maybe I have overlooked something. So this is uh, making the nine point. Why not? Uh, two builders and dilly builder six four. I don't like. Before I play six to four, I very much prefer thirteen eleven or eleven to nine. So I can exclude this one in my book. This is nice. Strips the midpoint already, which is not so nice. And if we give indirect shots, it's always a good idea to check uh, what are these, the hitting numbers do on the other side. How good are they already? So here we have uh, six two which is not so good on the other side. So 6-2, we, we gave him a great shot with 6-2. 5-3 is blocked anyway. And we have double twos. Okay, this is a good roll already. We can ignore it. And double four, still good. But basically we are giving him 6-2. Uh, so a great roll, which would other be otherwise be quite, more, not really bad, but uh, yeah, nothing, nothing good. Average, I guess, or below below average. Okay, so six two, we give him more or less a, a joker, and to avoid this six four, I don't like on making the two point and having still having the, the stack on the on the midpoint. No, I don't like this. So I like just making the nine point, keeping my spare on the mid. How bad should this be? Let's try it. Too close to call. Okay, so in the current game, 
the player made a huge blunder by making the two point, which is a 180 millipoint error. Whoa. Okay, and here we have to check it on XG because the best move is analyzed on XG roller plus and uh, 13 to 9 is only on 4 ply and 6 millipoint and that's why it's too close to call. We did not find the best move but it's we get not punished. So it was treated like a, like a correct solution. So let's do the usual stuff and enter this. And we go to XG to check how good or how bad my move was. Let's find out. So on plus plus it seems very to be very close. So oh, it seems to really be too close to call, I guess. Let's see, let's see. Still analyzing 39. Maybe it jumps to the top. Maybe, maybe. Or will the difference get bigger than two millipoints, which it currently is? Oh, it's really. Oh, it jumped, it jumped to the top. Now my my move from making the nine point is the best by by an extremely big difference of one millipoint. Wow. Which I also like. Sometimes we know that often enough we have to uh, surrender against uh, XG, but it's always nice to see this, that your move is on top and the one that XG first preferred, you see this on the little XG icon on the left, that on a lower level it was, uh, it estimated this as the best move, so, and only on the higher level, like here on plus plus, it recognized that the other move was better. So in a way you can say that you played better than XG. Does not happen very often, so it's a good, Good reason to celebrate it when it happens. Okay, then we go back. Sixty-five uh, percent. Let's hope we can continue our strike of good solutions. <laughs> we only have two in a row, but let's hope for the best. So, what happened here? I guess we had a 5-4 in the opening, which we played the usual way by playing the 5 down from the mid and splitting the 4 from the 24 point. And our opponent had a 5-3 or 6-2 and hit us on the 5 point. And now we have double twos. And I'm pretty sure that um, we have to hit so with a 3-1 against an ace slot, it's very close. Or with 3-1 we, we hit, and with double aces it depends on which slot. So I'm pretty sure that when the alternative is to, to make the 4-point, uh, hitting is even clearer. So I guess the first three twos are forced and then the fourth is uh, clear as well. Why not 13-11? But let's check. Match score check is we are behind in the race slightly two to three in a 15 point match. So we should treat this like in a money game. Let's see. So hitting and moving up. Okay. It's an option after hitting to move up, but you reduce the outfield coverage, uh, the inner board control. Uh, 
I think this is a normal move. I like this very much. Hitting and stepping out. Why? Why should you give him good sixes from the bar? Not a good idea. You should try the the reverse to give him bad sixes from the bar. Eight six makes no sense and not hitting at all. Uh, it's a crazy move. I go with this one. Wow, the player really did uh, did not hit, which is very very bad here. One hundred forty nine millipoints error, huge blunder. Okay, and the two moves that we are uh, we're talking about are pretty close. So the other one stepping up would be a thirteen millipoint error. Okay. So basically, yeah, this was almost a gift, this problem. Then we add it. And coming up to 67%. Nice, next position. So we started with a 3-1 and made our five point. Uh, the opponent had double threes, making the 21 point and th uh, 10 point. And now we have a five one. And uh, this is, even though I was, I had a very big mouth earlier on and we found an exception. You remember with this five two against uh, the six six, where Especially with the match score lead, it was not right to make uh, to enter on the 20 point and slotting 6 to 4. But here we still have a tiny lead, 7 to 5 to 17. But here I'm 100% sure that 24 18 is the right play because I know, well, believe that uh, when it comes to an advanced anger, you have to fight for an advanced anger which means splitting and splitting with an ace is not enough and then you have only one other option which is 24 to 18 which i will play for sure let's check here this is just uh, nonsense this is a small split if uh, it looks quite nice but uh, if you have seen it so often that the a split is not enough you know just know that it's wrong then not splitting at all is bullshit and this is the right move. Let's do it and collect another point. Because we know what's right. This is the fun. If you practice this and then you see this and you are really 100% sure that you are making the right move in a situation where players who have not studied this uh, will have to think and maybe make an error. And you not only avoid the error, like here, where the small split is a 40 millipoint error. It's quite huge. Uh, and you just know that it's right. And that's really the fun of uh, this practice or training sessions. But you also saw that we have a lot of positions where, which I do not understand yet. So we need more of these concepts and uh, ideas that we have that we cover, we will cover almost all positions that are possible or type of positions that are possible in the third move. Because you cannot remember them all just by learning that like you may be able to do with the second roll, at least for money game you can uh, learn it by heart. But if you start with match scores it's getting quite complicated even in the second roll or even in the first roll. Okay. Then, did I copy this already? No, I don't think so. So we get the IGXG ID and we copy it. And we jump up to 68%, which does not look too bad, but the next blunder is just around the corner. You have to be careful and don't take it 
too easy or too lighthearted. Okay. Ed O'Loughlin versus Nick Blazier. Two famous names in the Begammon circuit. And Black started with a, or should I say, we started with a 6 1, made our bar point, and the opponent run out with a 6 2. Most likely with a 6 2. With a 5 3, he would have a good option alternative of making the 3 point, which I think would also be the best move. So I guess it was a 6 2. The best guess and then we have a 3-2 now to play i saw quite often that uh, coming up with both back checkers is right in these kind of positions where we have our bar point and uh, yeah I want to avoid giving extra shots here because 13 to 8 looks to me a little bit uh, passive yeah, bringing another the tenth check on the jo Joan in the zone is a good idea, but it looks a little bit passive. And we want don't want to make it so easy for the opponent to save his uh, blood on the on our nine point or on his sixteen point. So we need then we need some out to increase our outfield coverage, which is not quite good with the two men on the twenty four point, which means. We would like to split, but if we split, what do we do with the other number? So most likely we want to split with the three. And we don't want to give him a direct shot. I don't think so. You are duplicating twos, yeah, looks nice. But I guess coming up and giving no direct shots at all is the best idea, which I will try. But let's take a look and what the moves look like. So 13 to 8, yeah, it's a little bit passive and makes it too easy to consolidate for our opponent to consolidate by, yeah. If he plays a 5 to the 11, his 11 point for example, then we only hit with a 6-4, so we need to come up. So when you have the, made the bar point and you roll it to one, it's very often correct to make your five point. So make your five point and leave a blot on your bar point. So, so slot the bar point, so to speak, by giving it up. But the four point is a different story. So I don't think that this is right. Um, Split and slot without duplication. I don't like up up. I'm relatively sure that this is the right move because I think I saw this in similar situations. This is also nice here with this nice duplication of twos, and I guess it's a move that was chosen by Ed O'Loughlin. So we can check one. When was this uh, match played? It's a relatively new match in the eighteen in two thousand and eighteen. Yeah, I guess I'd choose this nice looking uh, uh, this pro move like duplicating. Um, did not like here this beginner like looking play coming up with two checkers which I like now because I saw it quite often in similar situations. So I go with this. <sighs> okay, that's funny. So I got this one thing I got right. I got right that Ed played this uh, nice Pro move because it's duplicating the twos. And it was a mistake. That one I got right. And 
And I also got right that my move is better. I have to to uh, double check this because of the different level. But what I what I mentioned and thought the four point is a different story. It's the best move here. I don't like it. <sighs> I would like to use the F word. <sighs> Okay, let's first update here the statistic. Now we are back to 65% and enter it in extreme. And let's see how close our move is. And let's see if we have to feel bad about it. Okay, seems to be a close thing. Let's check on plus plus. Okay, it's very close, only 11 millipoints. I can live with that. But it's still interesting that changing or switching the bar, your bar point against the four point is a good candidate. Okay, I did not know that. I only know it from two one. That making the five point is often right. Nice one. Very nice one. So, 65%, I think we should try another one. So at least uh, it's small, small consolation here that we jumped up here and I had now of uh, BJ Jürgen but uh, we are far away from our high score of 17, so and 65% overall is nothing to be too happy to be too happy about. Okay, let's try this one. We have uh, started the game with a 4-3 and did the the reverse split with the three and coming down with the four and the opponent rolled a 3-1 and made his 5 point and now we have 6-4 and so if we would have started with a 3-2 and split it then I would know now that against 3-1 it's correct to play 21 to 11 and not make our bar point when we started with a 3 2 in the beginning. And against all other opening uh, opening replies other than 3 1, it would be right to make the bar point. But after 3 1, I guess the attacking chances are too good, so we have to safety the blood. Anyway, we are not talking about a 3 2 opening, we have to. Otherwise, how is the 6-4 after 3-4? After Does this help us? So we have uh, several options. One is, which I prefer without further analysis, 
Yes, I'm making the nine point and then playing uh, 21 to 15. So we are ahead in the race. Racing is a good idea. We could also race with 21 to 11, which means we have nothing in structure. Making a point, even an outfield point, is worth a lot. Anyway, let's check. We are leading 8-7 in a 13-point match. And let's check the alternatives here. So this looks very, very strange coming out to the 18-point. I don't like. But it's interesting that it's here included, which means that the nine point has some value, which may point us in the direction just that the other move that makes the nine point may be right. That that even this move here, which looks quite odd, makes it in the top five. Okay, running with the back checker. Okay. Not making the nine point, giving the hit. This is just ridiculous. Okay, but here we can still check uh, what is sitting here. Six four. Is it good on the other side? Yeah, so so. Huh? Makes the two point, but has to give up the eight point. Oh, hitting is an improvement, but it, it's not make. It's not really a joke. Absolute joker. 6253, same story, can make 3.62 is the choker. We give him a choker. 4422s are good anyway, so we don't have to analyze it as hitters. Uh, I think we have to make, we need some kind of structure, not only builders. So this is my move. So even if we get hit, uh, at least we have uh, our nine point. So making the two point, no, I don't like this. So basically it comes to this move. And this one. I like the nine point so much, so I go with it. It's correct, a close thing. It's only 25 milli points to run to the 11 point. But, so you see that you give a lot more shots. Yeah? We give now uh, any three plus two one. So 13 shots compared to um, six shots plus double four, double two. So eight shots, five more shots. But we have a permanent asset. Permanent asset, the nine point, which gives us a real nice structure. You can also see it as a two builders on the nine point, which cannot get hit. Yeah. Okay, we got this one right, which is nice. Um, we are back to 67%, 2 to 1, not so bad, but far away from my goal of 80%, which I will not reach today, I guess. But let's try a few more. Let's see what happens next. Give me an easy one. Ooh. So we started with 6-2, splitting with the 6 and coming down with the 2. And the opponent made cor correctly made his 5-point with a 3-1. And now we have double 3. So first idea would be, are we in offense or defense? Before the roll, definitely we were in defense because the opponent has made his strongest offense point, offensive point, the five point. And here we could switch to offense by making two inner board points, but I don't think that this is right. 
right. So, the match score, does it help us? Uh, zero, zero in a seven point match does not help us at all. So my first instinct was making the 18 point and making the three point. I think making, often giving up the 8 point and making the 5 point is a good idea, but we, s we once had this uh, in one of the quiz sessions where I made the 5 point when I had two builders, the 11 and the 10. And then we uh, reduced the value of the builders by making the 5 point, which uh, Marcel uh, mentioned in the stream. But here we have one builder, so we have half of this argument that by making the five point, that the build on the eleven point gets somehow de devaluated. So and making the ten point by stripping the mid, uh, no, I think I would prefer making the three and uh, uh, unstacking my six point instead of stripping my mid point. So the question is, I'm pretty sure about making the 18 point with two of the threes. And then the question is, make the five or make the three. And I like the three. But let's take a look at how it looks on the board. Uh, this one, 13, 10 and 11, 8. This just shows how strong the 18 point is, but we make it anyway. Uh, that even stupidly not making another point uh, is is came up to or made it into the top five list. This just proves how strong the 18 point is, but we knew this before, so we have no advantage from this. So this is a five point. Okay, giving up the eight, and now the eleven, the the plot on the eleven point um, is only a builder, builder for the bar point and a cover for the eight point. So I don't like it. Making the eight, making the fifteen point. Oof. This more or less shows how important the eight point is, maybe because this is, yeah, of course we are ahead in the race, but making no no offensive point, I cannot believe that this is right. So I will make this move. I'm pretty sure. Oh. Making the turn, stripping the mid, I don't like. This looks good to me. I will try it. Let's hope for the best. Mess it up again. Mess it up again. We have to check how close it is because it's on a different level here. So best move is making the 10 point. I was way off here on this one because I did not like this at all. So I only analyzed move two and three, making the five or making the three. Oh. Let's see. First, we enter it to the statistic. Get another wrong one. Fall down to 64%, which I hate. I hate falling down. And we will check this on XG, which I will show you here. So, seems to get closer. Let's check on plus plus. My plus, my move is only 10 millipoints. It's bad for my statistic, but I can live with that because I, 
I still I don't understand why 13 to 10 is so strong. Well, it's one thing that my, my move is not so bad if it stays like that. But if you don't understand at all Varum, Varum, Varum is Deutsch, uh, why uh, 13 10 is so strong. Making an outfield point, stripping the mid, why this is stronger than the three. Of course, it uh, supports the builder on the 11, you can argue. Uh -huh. Okay, four melee points. So this was a little bit of bad luck to get here this one wrong, um, because uh, I would have gotten a close to call. So, uh, but anyway, that's a little bit unlucky to get thrown out of this quiz course on uh, proper settings it would be very close here four milli points only anyway we got punished because we did not realize why uh, making the 10 point and now uh, giving the 11 plot of the 11 point more power way more power now it is really useful together with the two builders on the 10 point that's that's the reason I guess but uh, of course if it would have been wrong I would have said uh, stripping the midpoint is not a good idea and inner board points are more important than outfield but it's, it's always easy we know we all know that uh, that is always easy to argue if we see the XG results anyway I can live with this one mm -hmm. I have made bigger mistakes today and in general So let's go back. And we try another one. I guess three hours should be the minimum for this video. It's not a live stream anymore since we had issues here. I don't know why YouTube did not start the stream. But now I know why it makes sense and I did not do this today to check if the stream is running in YouTube after starting it. You should always do this. I don't know why it did not start. It should start as soon as the data is sent to YouTube, but it didn't today. That's why we only have here a video on demand and not a live stream, which is a kind of pity because the nice thing about live streams is that we can discuss and enjoy this here together and have a little bit of discussion in the chat which is always nice anyway we always learn from our mistakes not only from our pkm mistakes but from our mistakes in general then we give it another try this should be easy one again uh, we, we started the game with 5-3, made up of 3 point. The opponent had double threes and made the 21 on the 10 point. And now we have a 4-3. We know that we have to split. And the question is how? Match score, does it help us? We are leading 2-0 to 9. I don't think it's a good idea to come up with both. I said this so often that it was wrong again. The problem is if I only split, what do I do with the other number? Yeah. Six, two, yeah. Playing behind the anger. It's a good idea to, to slot your home field, home board points that you get a strong board when he runs from the anger. But he did not, he, he had double three, not double six. So he's not so, so much uh, ahead in the race as after double six. So this is not the point here. And um, yeah. And before we create another plot here, why not come up with both? And if he attacks on one point, maybe we can make the other 
Anchor. I will try this. Let's check what happened here. But what did Roberto, is the strong player, what did he do wrong here? So 13 to 6, definitely too passive. This is this is a no-go against advanced anchor to play passive. No, 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 no. I cannot believe that playing 6-3 behind the anchor can be right. Um no 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 no. I play this one. Here adding putting another plot without duplic even if without duplication. I don't like it. I will try this. Let's hope for the best. It was right. Wow. Wow. Roberto played here 13 to 6. This is completely the wrong idea not to split against an advanced anger. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. When was this? 2015. Yeah. Okay, maybe he had a bad day. So, I will just copy this. I'd get 50 to right, we are back to 65%. And we go to the next one. Hope we can add another one on the positive side. So with a 2-1, we did not do the normal move of slotting. We, we did split, which is wrong. So my rule of thumb is for 2-1 in the, in the opening role at the tournament. Um, only split when you are three or more points ahead. That's my rule, which maybe I have to redefine or or make more precise in the future, but that's my current rule for not making the standard play of slotting. And uh, yeah, here leading two points to 13. I think this was a mistake, but that's not the topic here we are here today we are here for the third move so the opponent had a 4-3 split it with the three and played the four down from the mid and now we have 6-1 so and we have the option making the five or hitting so and since i heard a lot that i'm hitting too often and that Making the five find is such a nice thing to have. I'm pretty sure that you're making the five is right. Even so, he has the best builder he can have, the one on the nine point, which has the most uh, building power. So we would like to do some kind of tempo hit or hitting at all. Um, but the five point is just too valuable. I will make it. So the others are just here to make the five move lists complete. This is my move. Hitting makes no sense. When we hit, we hit on the 16 point. Making the bar is stupid because the five point is stronger. This is an alternative where we have nothing, no permanent asset or granted asset. On the, this is a super nice structure and I try it. I have seen it too often, this hitting is here wrong and making the five point is right by far or correct by far. So I'll do this here <sighs> and got it wrong again. 35 millipoints making the five point. What a horrible day. I don't like it at all. So let's face it and 
copy the ID, update. And we're going down to 33%. Okay, I give it another try. And then we call it a call it a day. So I will continue until I mess up next time. So let's cross fingers that it will get better. Oh, another player joined the group, Taupnix. He had two correct ones. So now I will go for gold and make the run. I'm feeling quite confident. Okay, what happened here? It looks like that we played the 3-4 the very old-fashioned day. Uh, splitting with the 4 and playing the 3 down. And the opponent had aces and made the 5 and the bar point. So, Michael Sankiewicz. Uh, really big star in the began scene already in the... 80s, maybe also in the 90s, 70s, I don't know. At least in the 80s and 90s. Let's see from when this uh, match is. Oh, it's a pretty new match, so he's still active. Good to see. It's from 2015 against the superstar Matt Cohn Gaia. Okay, what happened here? He messed up the 3 1, which I hopefully can avoid. Hmm. So the idea is that we would like to split as long as the opponent has only eight checkers in the zone. But we have this nice 10 point we could make. And we have a very special match score. We have here, we are leading 9, 7 to 11. Um, this classic two way, four way which means our opponent will very soon double us and we uh, fight for getting a close take. So I'm pretty sure this is, this is, a, this, is a, this is a strong double at this score no matter how we play this. But how how can we squeeze out a take here? So I think the evening might come to a sudden end here because this is not an easy decision. So oh, we have to fight somehow. So I am playing with the idea of entering with the three and coming up with the ace. This is my top choice. Funny enough, it's also the top of the list, which of course means nothing. <laughs> this is my move. And the only alternative is, but it's, yeah, and the 10 point is nice. But I don't think I have a take after entering with the ace and making the 10 point. I don't think so. So this is entering the 20. No, we have to come up, we have to fight. We have to fight for daylight and put him under maximum pressure. So this is the passive play, which I think is not not right here. This is super aggressive and uh, especially at this match score this is suicide. So this is definitely a double, double pass at two away, four away. This might be an idea but I think we have to come up. Yeah, I'm pretty sure now that this is the right move. I'm pretty confident. Let's see if I made it better than Michael. Would be nice. Otherwise it means good night, goodbye, and better luck next time. Whew. Wow, the passive play is a huge blunder here with 127 milli points. 
Wow. Okay. I'm quite, quite proud that I found this one. Especially if you see that a superstar can mess it up here. And even though I was uh, whining at the beginning because I thought it's very difficult, at the end I was pretty confident that uh, I found the right move. Which is always nice that you have talked you into uh, yeah into some confidence not just guessing but uh, after arguing with yourself to find a good reasoning for the different moves and uh, yeah nice one get initial position copy it to the right column to the green column 16 to 9 64 percent let's continue cross fingers please give me an easy one Whew. okay so it looks like we started with a two three which we played the usual way splitting with the three and coming down with the two and the opponent almost killed us with a double four making the golden point and hitting on the four point pointing on our head and now we have a 3-1. Same story as usual. Opponent has a advanced anchor. We have to fight for an advanced anchor, which means entering on the 24 point is a no-go. It's just waiting for death if you do that. So we have to enter on the 22 point. Yeah, and then we can Think about the ace. And we played maybe 11 to 10. We have some kind of duplication or even triplication of the fives. Because the fives are good to make the eight points. Fives are good to hit on the ace point. Or quadruplication. Because they are also good to hit on the three point, on the ace point, to make the eight, to make the eight point <laughs> or to hit on the on our 10 point so which means um, double five would be a huge joker and it could the opponent would like to play it eight times instead of only four times okay and we are leading in the match six to four maybe this is an exception that we back it up with 24 and 11 to 8. Because he's so stacky and they are not primed yet and he has given up the 8 point. This is an ex exception that we have to fight for the advanced anchor when the opponent has an advanced anchor. Maybe. Let's check. So this is... No, I don't think so. If I enter on the 24 point, I will back it up and wrap it up with 11 8. So, this is the fighting play. Yeah, before I d detected an... Yeah, okay. This is no good. And... Yeah, this is... I think it's still too passive. So uh, and here a similar move than in the position before that we come up with the ace but here now we lose duplication a little bit and what's what's the advantage of coming up we are not threatened to get prime on primed on the 24 point so we can stay back I think Maybe it's in a, in a, maybe we found another exception to fight for the advanced anchor when the opponent has one, but then I cannot uh, just guess and re and deviate from my standard procedure before I definitely see or have seen that it's an exception. So I have to go with my system and play. 22 and then 11 10. 
That's it. And it's correct. Poor, look how big a blunder. How big a blunder uh, the so-called safe play is. 24, 11, 8. It's a 109 millipoint blunder. Wow. 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 I have to repeat it. Okay, let's just move it here. And we are back to 65%. Still a chance to if we keep on going. And we can get a good result. But as soon as I make another mistake, I will have to wrap it up with a pretty disappointing result. Let's see. Give me an easy one, please. So we started with a 4-2, made our 4 point, and the opponent played a 6-3 by splitting to our bar point and playing the ten, uh, 3 down to the 10 point, and now we have a 4-3. I'm pretty sure that splitting with the 3 and playing the 4 down is correct. I see no alternatives. It's standard that we uh, split to the point that uh, the opponent is less less eager to attack on, so it makes a huge difference. He would very much prefer to attack on the five point. So duplication is basically the same. Yeah? If we play this one, we have duplicated the twos. So he has twos, fours, and sixes, and on the on my side of the board, twos to hit and six to anger. So anchor. So three good numbers. And the alternative split would be one, threes, and fives, and sixes. Well, threes are duplicated, but sixes are not duplicated. And it's, uh, it's uh, he would prefer to attack on his five point compared to attacking on his uh, four point. So, pretty sure. Um, up, up. I don't think so. So that this is right in this situation, playing safe is just waiting for your death. Hitting, yeah, with a five, yes, but by giving up the eight point, I don't think so. So I'm pretty sure that this is the right one. Unstacking the mid with duplication looks very good to me. Let's go, we are down. 0 to 3 to a 9 point in a 9 point match which argues also against uh, coming up with both back checkers I think so I stay with my first instinct here so it's correct and the game was played both checkers from behind which is a 35 millipoint error okay nice one Quickly copy the ID. And we are back to a 2 to 1 ratio. So, what happened here? Played 4 1 the usual way, 4 down and uh, splitting with the ace, and the opponent run with a 6-3 or a 5-4. Now we have 3-2. And we can either anchor or we can hit. And if we hit, where do we play the 2? Not an easy decision and it may easily be the last quiz of the day or the last position because this is easy to mess up. So we are down in the match, 2-7 to seven in a 15-point match, which might argue against anchoring up. But of course, anchoring is a permanent asset. 
And we have good chances to make a point next time with this potent builder on the nine point. So it seems to be easier to make a, a new blocking point than anchoring. But of course, anchoring is not so necessary right now. We have good outfield coverage and inner field coverage with the minor split with the ace. So the question is, what do we play after hitting? If we move up, we have the problem that we may not be able to use our builders because the opponent will often hit us on the four point, or the five point. Depends on where we. Uh, yeah. So if I move up, I would move up with the tool that he cannot attack with so much joy, so to speak. Okay, let me take a look at this five possible ways so i like basically i like hitting uh, because i'm not in we are still in the offense and i i don't fear that i get here uh, and especially when we're down in the down in the match I, d I think that anchoring is especially when you're down in the match is too passive so here we can hit and then play 10 to 8. Kinda nice. Hit and then move up. Wow. The idea is it's most likely that he cannot will not hit on the three point. And then we have anyway, you will hit with threes, fours, fives, and sixes to avoid that we can use our builders to make new points. <laughs> so difficult. I think this is really, really, really difficult. Because playing two down, now you... Yeah, but you can still lose tempo hits. <laughs> and we are not able to use our builders. Oh man. I think I go with the anchor. Even. Yeah, we still have good chances to make a new point next time. We have outfield control. I like it. I do it. And I cannot decide between the other ones, to be honest. What I don't like is here the match score. Huh? But otherwise, this is just. I'm, I'm locking in a permanent asset, the anchor. If I hit, there's nothing permanent. Now we have good chance to make a good blocking point next time. He's far away from being safe. Yeah, on the 15 point, he has not so many good possibilities to make an outfield point, which would not already make an uh, other good point. Even so here, two four is blocked, cannot make the four points. So making the 11 point is a real good one. But 6, 4 and 3, 5, you could also make inner board points. Oh. Okay. I go with the anchor. Let's see what happens. And I messed it up. And a huge mistake. Wow, look what a huge mistake this is. 120 milli points. Good reason to use the F word. And the best would have been hitting and then hiding the blood. But any other hitting play would be better. That's what we can learn here. We can check it a final final time on XG. And then we will wrap it up. Oh, 
course, I don't like to wrap it up with 64%, but sometimes you have to face the reality. Okay, let's put it in XG, final time. So the plays are very close that are hitting. Check this on plus plus and go down to the big blunder here. Oh, it's horrible. And of course, uh, being behind in the match made it even worse. We will see that uh, anchoring will definitely not be the correct play in money game. But uh, anchoring will be a bigger mistake in when being behind in the match than in money game. So. Okay, let's do this plus plus final XG plus plus analyze of the day. Take a closer look at it. So, what I also hate if I have to make this box bigger that I can see my play and the best play at the same time without having to scroll down. But I'm sure you guys hate this as well and know this from your personal experience. Except if you are a player of the caliber of Moji or Dirk. But normal human beings know this issue experience it once in a while it's not nice <laughs> so going to a close end so hitting and then hiding the blot is the best because we know otherwise you cannot use your builder since you you remain with your with your potent builder on the nine point and and the hits are not so attractive if we step up in opponent's um, home board. So he likes to make a tempo hit anyway, but now we can make a tempo hit at the same time fighting for a good point, which we should not give him the chance to do. So, yeah, and I was lazy. I th you heard me saying that I cannot decide between the other moves. And that's why I, <laughs> I made the anger. Of course, this was a stupid reasoning. So, 142 millipoints in the third roll. So, to come back to the beginning of this video, it's so important to learn this uh, opening moves, so or in this case, the third roll moves, because there are so many of them and you have to understand the concepts, otherwise you make big errors or... Lots of small errors and sometimes an even bigger error, like me here in this case, 142 millipoints by anchoring up here and not hitting. Okay, and the final one we do before we wrap it up is how would it be in my game? I guess the error would still be maybe a 100 blunder, but not 140. Let's see it's kind of funny that it looks like that 2318 is in the was rollout but the best one's not sometimes strange so we see here it's in the at least it's in the top five we just give it another plus plus Something weird here. If we 
have part of it rolled out. It's in the book here. 2318. Other moves are not strange. Anyway. Let's see. So the, the best move is still hitting and then um, hiding the plot instead of putting another builder down and uh, because the opponent has so many possibilities to do a tempo hit so we uh, we will find a hard time to use our builders that's why we just reduce it to one builder the nine point and hope for the best and let's see how good or bad anchoring will be very soon. Few more seconds. Start with me. Okay, so instead of 140 millipoints, it's still a 100 millipoint error here in the money going or at an even score. Here, I think. That's it for today. So I got 18 right and 10 wrong from 28. 64%, which is, uh, yeah, since last time I had 74%. I'm a little bit disappointed, but this shows me that I have to practice even more and that we will do this third rolls, Chris, um, a few times more in the future until I reach my goal of 80 or basically my real goal is 90% plus. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm really sorry that it was not a live stream today because I did not check at the beginning that the stream did not start or did not realize it and I don't want to stop because I realized it after I talked for about half an hour, so I decided to continue this because the recording, I'm pretty sure, is running. So I will immediately after stopping this, I will upload the recording to YouTube and then you can watch it. Or when you see this, you already watched it. Of course, it's a, still a big disappointment for me, this technical, technical issue, because um, yeah, the fun of a live stream is that you can Communi communicate together in the chat and um, yeah so today I talked three and a, almost three and a half hours alone without any communication that's a little that makes me a little bit sad because I'm so used to the active stream and I really enjoy it when you guys write something in the chat where I can when I can react to it so but I learned I have to after starting the stream, I have to check in YouTube if it's running or not, and otherwise I have to restart it. That's the important lesson learned. So on Thursday, we have a very nice thing coming up. Uh, we play a consultation double, which is not the first one, but uh, it's a special one because we uh, now have uh, some kind of mixed double, you can say. So we have... Um, you have uh, Marcus and myself as the so-called expert, and we have two uh, other players, uh, Habet and uh, Cardia, and uh, which maybe are a little bit higher in PR. And the idea is that um, Habet is playing with Marcus and uh, Card Cardia is playing with me, and that maybe we get some. Yeah, maybe it's also more interesting for the you viewers because uh, now we may get uh, different kind of questions asked by the players, and hopefully we get Marcus and myself can give uh, helpful or intelligent answers. I hope, but of course sometimes uh, you have no answer then. Or you may, or you think you have a good answer, and later on in the analyzing, you realize that you have screwed it up. It may happen. But so the idea is to to reach a broader audience. So also maybe 
so-called weaker players or are not not players in maybe in the range of four five or six or maybe in the higher range and uh, yeah because we want to deliver content for uh, all of you guys who love this game like i do so i hope you will all come back on uh, thursday at 6 30 we will do this in german again but don't worry if you don't speak German, we will soon have uh, uh, another stream in English, I'm pretty sure. So at least I want to to release one, one video or live stream in English uh, in every month. So yeah, please subscribe. It uh, helps me a lot because I realized that uh, YouTube, even though I'm not a YouTube partner yet, because I need, I need uh, 1000 subscribers to reach that, but YouTube will put in uh, advertising anyway. But of course, as long as I'm not a YouTube partner, uh, I will have uh, no profit. And if you get bothered by advertising, advertisements anyway then why not support me and subscribe so i get up to 1000 subscribers and then i at least get a few cents for for the advertising and it just feels good when you have 1000 subscribers at least so please uh, like the video, press the subscribe button and of course visit the stream on Thursday. It will be really special and really interesting, I can promise. And I'm really eager and looking forward to it. So join me on Thursday at 6.30. Although it will be in, in German again, but it will be a lot of fun, I'm quite sure. So have a nice evening. I love you all. Bye-bye.